Oh. Engage. Maybe change to another gear? Welcome to the new episode of our series Computers of Chernobyl. We got a functional part of the famous Scala computer of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. This is PL150M data tape punch. The Scala was a specialized machine that controlled and recorded the parameters of the RBMK nuclear reactors. And we actually are going to have a big episode about it at some point. But what we did already, we had long talks with power plant engineers about how that thing actually operated. And apart from other interesting things they told, they mentioned that the test programs for Scala have been stored exactly on a paper punch tape. It was made exactly with this type of device, which we, by a strange coincidence, have. In the Chernobyl zone you could find these devices not only at the power plant, but in many other places where they were used, for example, with Soviet PDP-11 cloned mini-computers or Industrial Electronica 60. For example, this is what remained for the exactly same device at the Jupiter plant in Pripyat. You could use them even to pass programs for CNC, but the main application in the USSR was uh, for yes AVM mainframes, the big machines, Soviet architectural clones of IBM 370. And in regards of this, I have a really mind-blowing announcement for you. Watch closely. These are remains of yes 1060. It was one of the most powerful mainframes ever created in the Soviet Union. And this very machine is located here, in the computer center of Duga over Horizon Radar in the secret town of Chernobyl too. They also used punch tapes, by the way. And after a decade of searching across all Ukraine, we found this. There is a big chance that this is the very last control panel of this type of computer existing in this condition, because altogether they were produced not more than 313 of them. And we are going to restore it and make as much functional as possible, like this. We believe you will not miss an opportunity to become a part of this project, because there are going to be a lot of engineering and interesting research. So join us on Patreon to help us make this thing alive again after 30 years of being forgotten. And you will get exclusive updates of how it is going, which you will post exclusively on Patreon. So a link is in the description below. It's worth it. For those of you who don't know what the punch tape is, let me give you a little historical insight. The punch tape and the punch cards are perhaps the oldest type of data media. Originally, it appeared more than a century ago to store programs for the Jacquard machines. When the vacuum com tube computers appeared, it became a pretty convenient way to store programs. And the tapes were used up to the end of the 80s. The tape could be white or narrow, but the principle remained always the same. Every hole punched on a tape represents one bit of information. And there is also a line of smaller holes, which is called a synchronization track. And now let's look for a hardware. This tape punch is a well-designed device, which is pretty compact and actually quite convenient to use. First you open this lid, so here you can access the punching mechanism. Then on this spool you install a roll of blank tape, uh, pass it through the mechanism and it comes through the hole on another side. Here it's even special blade that allows to cut the tape in one move. Round paper beads that are punched out from a blank tape come through these plastic holes into a removable bit bucket. So PL150M has this tiny control panel with various switches and connectors, and in particular this round huge connector provides the communication with the punch controller. That was kind of a table-sized rack full of electronics which was connected to the byte multiplexer channel of the actual mainframe. However, if you power the punch just so, it will not do anything, it even will not start the motor. And to initiate the test mode, uh, we needed to make such a test connector with a couple of pins interconnected. 
Next to it, there is a bypass power socket for a tape roller, which is an integral part of the system. And here probably a few side notes needed. This tape roller is used normally only when the tape punch operates with its highest speed. But when it comes to reading a tape, it becomes a must-have device. Because while punching is mechanical, so it's relatively slow, the reading is optical, so it's much faster. In the AS EVM system, they used FS1501 optical tape readers. Made in Czechoslovakia, same as me. So, <laughs> if you don't use this thing, you will get a typocalypse in a few seconds. Each roll of the tape has a plastic ring inside, so it firmly sits on the roller spool. And that's how it works. Inside, in fact, is just a motor and a coupling. So, simple and useful. Okay, back to our hero. Uh, next to the roller socket, there are three switches. One to power the tape punch on, second to start the motor, and third one to turn on the punching mechanism. There is also a button that initiates punching of the synchronization track. And the power cord also comes from this panel, so altogether very accessible and pretty convenient. From another side, there is a separate earthing connector and also a connector for a switch which is hidden inside the spool. Uh, it normally signalizes that the blank tape has ended. Okay, so now let's remove the cover and see what's inside, because it's even more interesting. And uh, the cover holds on just a few screws, everything is also easily accessible, which I must say pretty unusual for socialistic block machinery. And this is what we have inside. I will also additionally remove these plastic white covers of the over the punch and mechanism so we can see more. Given it is mostly electromechanical device, uh, there is practically no electronics, except of relatively simple socket board, which is placed on the very bottom below the mechanism. Everything here is powered by this large electric motor. On one side of it there is a fan, because uh, all of this becomes pretty hot during operation. And on another side uh, there is such a coupling that distributes rotation to the actual punching mechanism. It is, as we said before, adjustable to three various speeds. And uh, the highest one is recommended to use only with plastic tape, there existed such. Because a paper one uh, will likely be just torn to pieces. The punching mechanism is pretty small, but at the same time pretty complex. There are eight electromagnets that power these little metal cylinders that make the actual holes. On the top there are a few metal guides that let the tape pass precisely through the punching matrix. And here, by the way, there are two knobs that you can move to use a narrower tape, because a tape could be either 8 bits or 6 bits wide, so you just move them and it sits firmly. As soon as tape passes the punching matrix, it gets to this wheel, which pushes it forward. And it has such pins that get inside the small holes of the synchronization track. Similar to yes drum printers, this tape punch is a device that works based on a so-called cyclogram. Because the mechanism is at any time is rotating and it being engaged only when it is needed, at a precise moment. So all that is mechanically connected with this thing, which is called synchronizator. And there are three kind of switches, mm, I don't know how they call it correctly, if you know, just write me in the comments. So these things, they send the current position of the mechanism to the punch controller. And if you rotate the motor manually, that is what it looks like. Alright, so let's clean these guides, because there are obviously something stuck, and try to actually punch something. So there it is, a yellow piece of a tape punched in the past. <laughs> I wonder when the last time this thing actually worked. I know it's been standing just on the shelf for 20 years, so pretty long ago. So first we install the roll on the spool, and then we pass it like this through all the rollers. Here everything is mounted on the springs, uh, so it provides proper tension, which is pretty important. Needless to say that in previous modifications there were much more of these rollers inside, uh, but later they were replaced with this kind of metal lips, uh, because it was really inconvenient with the rollers. 
So next we carefully pass the tape through the guides and the punching matrix. And finally, most important, through the main wheel. Well, after all of this we decided to put back uh, plastic covers, because in, other, in another case uh, the bits will be all around. And... Engage! <laughs> Yes, it works. You know, actually, uh, we were pretty much afraid that this thing will require replacing all the capacitors, but it works straight out of the box and it's really cool. When the punching is done, you can cut the tape like this using this building blade, and the triangle shape is perfect to place it in a storage spool. So, what's next? Uh, we are seriously thinking to make a modern uh, chip-based controller for this device and eventually try to punch something meaningful, say, uh, some data or maybe some pseudographic symbols, which this thing is pretty capable of. So, uh, the background of the process you will find on our Patreon page at some point, uh, so don't forget to join us there. And in the meanwhile, like this video and subscribe to our channel. And that's it for today, see you next time! Bye! Five hours later.